Hi guys, um, my name's Sheena Aja and I'm the author of the 11 plus vocabulary series called The Cadwaller The Quests. You can see those behind me there, that's some of the workbooks. Um, I want to say thank you to Agnes O'Brien, who is the founder of the group. Um, uh, we're recording this for her group today and I'm going to read this out because I always get it in the wrong order. It's the 11 plus ICEB, SAT, GCSE and A-level resource group. So that's Agnes's group. And today I am talking with um, the wonderful Peter Francis, who's actually a friend and actually a neighbour of mine. And um, so, hi, Peter, how are you? Good morning. It's lovely to speak to you, Sheena. I'm very well, thank you. Good. I'm good to hear that. It's good to hear that. And um, we want to keep the video quite short because we know that people don't have a lot of time. So if it's OK with you, Peter, can we get straight into it? Is that OK? Of course, yes, let's rifle through it. Brilliant. So you tell us a bit about who you are and what your background is. Right. Well, um, as you say, we're neighbours. We, uh, we both live in Crowthorne, which is famous for Broadmoor and Wellington College. And yep. um, uh, I've got three children. I'm married and I've got a cockapoo. That's uh, that's uh, the, 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 the basics of it. Uh, my background, well, I started out working um, at an early age in a studio. I was an illustrator to start with and worked my way up to production management. And, um, and that enabled me to, uh, to understand more about publishing. It was a computer publishing industry. So uh, after that, I worked for Apple for a year, selling Apple Macs. And um, I was a terrible salesman. So I ended up, um, decided to start my own design agency where I offered design and illustration services. And that's what got me into uh, working with um, developing nonverbal reasoning. And how long have you been doing the nonverbal reasoning questions? Well, I've been illustrating them um, initially off a drawing board with pen and ink uh, back wow. in the day. Um, and that was, that was over 30 years ago now. Doesn't look it, does it? But uh, yeah, it's 30 years ago and, uh, uh, I started to develop them myself over 10 years ago now. And you've got quite a pedigree. So who have you developed for? Well, most of the uh, the work I started off illustrating was for, well, the company was called NFER Nelson at the time, and uh, it has evolved into GL Assessment. Uh, so a lot of the work has been for GL Assessment, and we've developed um, a lot of spatial reasoning questions together as well. Um, but even, uh, after that, I've worked with um, uh, Galore Park, producing materials for them, and uh, Let's, um, and I've worked with uh, companies like Teach It Right, Chris Pierce, uh, who's also a good friend. And, yeah, they're good guys, Teach It Right. Um, so, there are, looking, at, as well. looking at those sort of um, companies, am I right in guessing that you're aiming very much sort of at 11 plus, both for state grammar and private schools? Yeah, any kind of um, any kind of student, any kind of en entrance exam, eleven plus, is where the materials are aimed at right now. Over time, it may develop and go to an earlier age, but right now it's eleven plus. That's the target audience. Although, if teachers or tutors are interested in using the materials as well for their students, I'm happy to speak with them. Well, it's interesting because um, my kids are both at grammar school now, but when they were at primary school, which was the local state primary. Mm -hmm. In years three and years five, they actually sat non-verbal reasoning tests, but the parents weren't told um, and they weren't called NVR, they were called something else. And it was only because my kids were actually doing it at home for the 11 plus that they told me about it. So I don't know whose products they use, Peter, but, or whether they still do it, but our primary school definitely did do it. So why is non-verbal reasoning an important skill to learn for the 11 plus, would you say? Uh, well, of course, not all schools employ the non-verbal reasoning tests for the 11 plus. So um, it's, for me, it's a massively important skill because it's all about logical thinking. Um, and for schools, what they're looking for is to understand the potential of the children that they're going to be taking into the school. So you accumulate knowledge in maths, you accumulate knowledge in, in, in English. Um, and whilst there's a crossover in intelligence senses between maths and nonverbal, uh, nonverbal is seen as giving much more of a, of a potential for future growth. Which is why it explains that I was absolutely awful at it. I still am. And um, that's why I write books, because I cannot work out anything spatially. It's, 
I can't even set the table correctly. I'm that bad. So that's really interesting. Um, so so they're kind of looking at it. It's it's a signal of kind of raw intelligence. So are you saying it can't be learned then, or you know, does practice? No. Non-verbal reasoning certainly can be learned. Non-verbal reasoning is a logical process. It's, okay. it's, um, I mean, when we talk about the difference between non-verbal and, um, and, and spatial, it's really recognised that spatial is more of an innate skill um, rather than non-verbal. Both of them can be taught. OK, hold that thought because we'll come back to that in a minute. So I want to talk about your brand new website, which is brilliant, by the way. So well done for that. So what prompted you to design a website that's you know geared just at nonverbal reasoning um a couple of years ago i put together some tests and uh and, and had them printed in a format that i thought would work for uh, Are those the tests that i've got peter the the pack that you gave me that's right yeah that they, they, they have evolved over the last okay. year brilliant tests by the way Thank you very much. Um, they, they. I'd like to think they're as close as you can possibly get to a to a real exam. Well, according um, to my kids, they were because my kids looked at them and said, "Yeah, that's that's how it was." Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. So uh, why the oh, sure. sure. So, uh, so so putting the tests together, they evolved into books rather than separate pieces of paper, which seemed to go down much better. And I thought, how can I, how can I reach a larger audience? How can I compile all of these tests that I've produced together in one place, but also explain more about nonverbal, spatial, the difference, the value, and, and, the, and the need for this information? So I thought, well, how can I collect it all together? A website seems to be the most sensible thing to do. So that's when that started to form an idea and come into, come into fruition. It's not easy putting together a website, is it? There's an awful lot of information that needs to be drawn together and um, getting the experts to put the to put the site together. So uh, am I correct in understanding then that your tests can be accessed on the website? They can. They are, oh, they are available okay. as online tests. So there's there's two ways of, of uh, acquiring the test, if you like. One is to sit in front of the screen and go through the questions one by one. At the end of a test, all the answers are compiled and uh, you'll understand the percentage you got right. You can then go back and redo the test um, at a later date. And um, the answers are given as well. So not only do you, you, take, you do a question and, and if, if it is incorrect, you understand what, you know, perhaps why it was incorrect. So you learn the skill and you don't make that mistake again. And that's really the point behind this is to get that education and knowledge into the students. OK, so um, are they age specific, the tests? Because obviously some parents will start in year three, some in year four. Obviously, everybody's probably working to it in year five. Are they age specific? <laughs> These are my tests are based around the skill levels that are required for 11 plus exams. Um, if you're if you feel your child is quite well advanced in logical thinking, then try it see where they're at and if they if they're getting a low percentage pass rate then park it and come back to it six months later see how they're getting on the key behind for me a lot, the big key behind a lot of these um, tests is confidence what i want to do is grow the children's confidence grow the knowledge grow the confidence and allow them to um, develop more skills and be enjoying the process which means they're more keen on, on doing it. And uh, I've always made it fun for my children. And if, if they enjoy it, they're, they're, they're keen on doing it and they want to do more of it. And I find that with nonverbal, if you make it a, a fun process because it's picture orientated, yeah. uh, it's, it's quite a nice thing to get involved in. And is it a subscription basis or is it a one-off payment basis on the, to access the tests? Yeah, it's a simple one-off payment basis, yeah, okay, at so the moment. It's yeah, so, you, so at the moment, if you want to do a test, you go on, you buy a test and you can do it online or you can print it off. Brilliant. You can't, you can't print it off. Oh, my bad. Uh, you order it and you'll get printed tests sent to you in the post. Ah, OK, right. So you so so you can't print the tests off. At the, that's that's not available at the moment, but you can order it and buy or you can access it online. That's exactly right. Yeah, she, and a lot, a lot of the independent schools, do they, am I correct in thinking that they sit the tests on a computer? Therefore, it's great practice for the kid to be doing this on a computer. 
I think so. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great practice to do it on a computer. Um, uh, pr printed, it's as it's as good as well. I I did I did toy with the idea of having the access to the um, test to be printed out at home, but you know what? Uh, there's so many people that take it, photocopy it, and um, abuse the system that uh, uh, that this is another conversation. I'm sure, but um, copyright. Uh, knows, tell uh, me about. Tell me about it. Yeah. Yes, yes. We, it's a problem that we have. But yeah, completely understand that, Peter. Uh, OK, so this is a question that I'm asking because I am never sure about this either, Peter. So maybe parents want to know this. Is spatial reasoning significantly different from what we call nonverbal reasoning? Is it di how different is it? Can you explain that to me? The, um, it, it, that's a great question. Uh, Nonverbal reasoning is all about working out the answer to a visual puzzle from the information given. So we use a logical process um, to work out the answer using deductive reasoning. We look for similarities and differences. We work out codes. We assemble rules in order to uh, uh, arrive at what a picture may look like that fills an empty box. It's all about, it's all about a logical process. Spatial reason is more about an imaginative process. So um, if you have a collection of blocks and you, you have five collections of blocks and you need to understand which of those collection of blocks builds a stack of blocks, you need to think about how they fit together in order to build that stack. Uh, rotating a three-dimensional object in space requires a different way of thinking from a logical process. Um, this can take a bit longer working it out because you're working it out in your mind, but that is seen as a more innate skill rather than a logical skill. If, um, if you look at someone like Gardner's nine intelligences, he will, he will separate out spatial reasoning from logical reasoning as two completely separate intelligences. Okay. So rather than learning spatial reasoning as much, you might, um, you might think of it more as a native skill. However, that, it's not to say it can't be developed. And the more we use it, the more we try it, the better yeah. we can come at it. That makes absolute sense. And on which exam boards um, do spatial reasoning? You know, and I know we can never say what's coming, but in general, is spatial reasoning more CEM or more GL, independent schools? Is there a bias towards it, a leaning? You know, a lot of it is schools driven. Um, some of the tests that are developed uh, by GL and, um, and, and CEM may be spatial reasoning specific. So the whole test is spatial reasoning. Others may have a mixed reasoning test that contain nonverbal as well as spatial reasoning. Uh, it's always difficult to tell what's going to be in a test. There are at least 20, we can establish at least 20 different spatial reasoning question types okay. um, and there are dozens more that have been used in employment exams and and uh, the military over the years and who's to say that GL or CM aren't going to be developing some more of those for next year's tests and we don't know about it so uh, with spatial reasoning as I say it's, a, it's an innate skill but there are techniques that can be learned that help you to accelerate the process to get to the answer but you know what, when it comes to folding a cube, try to use your imagination and your brain to look at that net and work out how it's gonna look when it's folded rather than using too many techniques because then you're going through a logical process rather than what the exam is looking for. Yeah, okay. So is there a diff, again, this is probably a bit of a tricky question and one that you might not be able to answer because we as lay people never know what's coming on a test, but is there a difference between sort of NVR, so the nonverbal reasoning, for GL and CEM? Or are they the same? They're very similar. And because we don't know what they're using, you can look at the, the typical nonverbal reasoning questions like matrices and series and analogies, and they will probably be um, similar in most tests. You get the odd one out, or you get the sets, or or classes like two and three, they are common and familiar across um, the tests. But with matrices, you might have box matrices with uh, GL and hexagonal or octagonal matrices with CEM. It may be, so the, 
it's slightly presented in a different way. The skills will still be the same, but the presentation will be different. It's the fundamental aspect is to learn the logical skills and look for differences and understand the, the rules behind uh, what's going on first. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. And then I guess if you understand that, it doesn't matter what comes up on the day. It's the same with maths. If you learn how to do it, they can dress the problem up in many different ways. But if you've got the fundamentals, then you should be able to do it. Um, is, I'm going to ask the same question. Is there a difference between spatial between GL and CEM or is that the same as well? So, you know, can any spatial reasoning question come up on C and GL and CEM? Uh, there are there are again differences. Um, if you take a stack of blocks and you look at them from above, so you you have a, t a 2D view or a plan view of a 3D stack of blocks, um, you won't find that currently in a GL exam, but you may find it in a CEM exam. So there are going to be individual uh, examples that are different from each other. Definitely. I guess the key word you use there, Peter, is currently, which means these GL and CEM, they could introduce that, um, not CEM, you're saying GL don't have it currently, but they could introduce that at any time. Look, skills want to take on students that are, that are good, solid students, of course. And uh, they want to, I think, take students on that haven't really been tutored, that they want to know what their, what their potential is, what their, what their skill level is right now. So they'll mix the questions around, they'll try new questions to not, not catch the children out so much as just give them something new that perhaps they haven't seen before to understand how they approach the problem. Okay, um, that's interesting, but I guess they can throw a curveball anytime. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, people often really differentiate between CEM and GL, and that is because in terms of their verbal reasoning, they can be quite different. But with nonverbal reasoning, I guess they can just change it, mix it up anytime they like. So I guess the answer to the question is cover everything. Really? Cover, everything cover everything you can. I mean, the, the, if they're going to change, they, they will change things year on year. So uh, uh, but they will probably be from a bank of question types that are in existence. OK. However, there are new question types that do come along and get developed, but there's quite a process. There's a trialing process and an understanding of difficulty levels that have to be analysed before they're put into any tests. Is there a specific place like such as GL or CEM's website where a, a parent can see that bank of questions or is that just private? The bank of questions is going to be tucked away private. Yeah, okay. the, bank, the question types of course, are all there. I mean, GL have a fantastic resource for uh, their own practice papers yeah. that cover all the question types that are currently. Currently, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and you can get those from the GL site. Um, so uh, I think we've, actually, no, there is one other question. What other products have you been involved with, if any? And I think you, well, I know you work with iEducate. Um, so, so what else do you do, Peter, with other people? Well, I was lucky enough to be um, um, to be asked by GL Assessment actually to write their uh, um, Understanding NVR book back in 2011. And since then I've written for Let's and Galore Park and worked with, as, a, as I said earlier, Teach It Right, uh, producing yeah. some material with them. And I educate, yes, of course. And there are a few other um, uh, uh, tu tutors that I've worked with developing materials for them, uh, which is nice because it, um, it, it's different sorts of um, requirements that um, suppliers and content developers require, which is nice because I, as you know, I don't tutor. That okay. is something that's yeah. completely with, at odds with um, with what I produce. So, uh, same it, as me, I don't tutor either. You know, right. I, I don't do it. Right, right. Not qualified to do it. <laughs> right. Same here, but you're too busy producing material anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so you've worked with iEducate, you've worked with all the big players in terms of um, publishing, um, and now you've got this amazing website, and it is a really lovely site, Peter. So um, I guess to wrap up our conversation today, can you tell us where your website address, exactly where we can find you? And I'll also put a link 
um, whenever I post this, I'll put a link to, um, to the website in the show notes. Well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say so. It's um, the website is easy to remember. It's passnvr. Brilliant. <laughs> that's all you need to do is passnvr.co.uk. Absolutely fabulous. So that's a dope. It's a. It's not a dot com. It's a dot co dot uk. So, but I yeah. guess I guess um, if we put that into Mr. Google, it'll just pop up anyway. So, um, yeah, brilliant. So, guys, um, if you want to see Peter's website, it's passnvr dot co dot uk brilliant and his papers are also brilliant as well uh, he really is the best in the industry so anyway peter if your head's not too big now well, you know he's going to take up the whole screen thank you so much and thanks to agnes for asking me to to chat with you today thank you so much Gina. it's been a joy pleasure see you peter bye, -bye. bye.